Good morning. All right. So, just like he said, my name is Coach T, and I am from an organization called the Sandy Hook Promise Foundation. And I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me this morning. We're going to be talking about very quickly some ways that you all can keep yourself safe. Uh, but before we get started, I always like to make sure you know who or what the Sandy Hook Promise Foundation is. So, by show of hands, has anyone here ever heard of Sandy Hook anything? All right, most people in here. So for those of you all who didn't just raise your hand or who do not know, Sandy Hook Promise is a nonprofit organization. It started a little bit over six years ago. It started after an incident happened at an elementary school called Sandy Hook Elementary in a city called Newtown, Connecticut. And one December morning at that school, an individual brought an automatic weapon to school. And on that December morning, 21st graders and six educators lost their lives. So because that incident happened, the family, the friends, and the people who lost loved ones that day, they got together about a month or so later, and they asked themselves a very, very important question. The question that they asked was, how could they make sure what happened to them and what happened to their loved ones, the hurt and the pain and the loss that they felt, didn't happen and doesn't happen to as many other people in as many other places as possible. So even though that rough situation happened at Sandy Hill Elementary, I'd like to say that Sandy Hill Promise is the rose that grew out of that rough situation. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today, some ways that you all can keep yourself safe. But really, this whole program, this whole presentation is really about choices. Because all of the information I'm going to give you is good information, is great information, and I know that it has the potential to save you or someone that you care about if you ever come into a situation that you need it, but it only makes a difference and it only matters if you make the courageous and the bold choice to speak up and to say something and to use the skills if you ever come into a situation where you need to keep yourself or people that you care about safe. So with that being said, we're going to watch a quick two-minute video, and then we're going to jump right into the presentation. All right. Or anxious because 
that happen to other people in other places. And you may be thinking, wow, can that happen to me? Can that happen here? You may be maybe mad that that even, or sad that that even has happened to someone, that someone's been hurt or been injured. Believe it or not, even though everything on this video was real, they all happen to real people in real places. Sometimes when people watch this, they, they don't take it serious. They think that it's a joke or a laughing matter, and they, and they joke and they laugh. And I can tell you as someone that's personally lost people that I care about in gun violence, people that I care and I love that I'll never talk to, see, or touch ever again, that it's always funny and we never take it as serious as we should until it happens to you, until it's somebody that you know. So it's your sibling, or it's your friend, or the person that you're sitting next to, or that you talk to on a daily basis when you get to school. And those are the exact type of things that we want to be able to prevent. Things that happen on the video to the people that are sitting next to you, to the people that go to school with you, and that ride the bus with you, and that you talk to, and that you're related to. We want to be able to protect those people as well. Because I want you to realize that this is your community. And if something happens here, it's not going to affect you. This isn't my community. It will, however, affect you. And I'd rather you have these skills and never need them than to need them or be in a situation where you could have kept yourself or someone else safe and not have, not have them or know how to use them. So that's what I'm doing here today. So if you're wondering who I am, this is me. My name is T.R. Richardson. I'm a life coach. I'm a writer and I'm a speaker. And I do this because I want to make sure that you're around to accomplish your goals and your dreams. Because if you're paying attention to the video, there's no too young or too old. A sixth grader here in our home state of Florida took her own life because of cyberbullying. So I want you to realize that there's things that we can do to be able to protect people, whether they be young like you or old like me or anywhere in between. And that's a very, very important fact for you all to realize because when we go into schools after things happen and we actually speak to the students and we, and we ask them, did they know anything was happening? They actually tell us things like this. Next slide, Morgan. Okay, so I, I've switched out my people. So this is my signal for next slide. That's my signal. I didn't know you. I had a different person. We're on the same page now. Got it. All right, so when we go into schools after things happen and we speak to students and we ask them if they know anything, they actually tell us things like this. Believe it or not, they say, well, actually, Coach D, as a matter of fact, yeah, I did know something. I saw their plans, but for some reason, I just never believed that they would actually make them happen. As a matter of fact, they told everybody, they put it all over social media, saying what they were going to do. As a matter of fact, they told me before we went home on Friday what they were going to do, but I just never thought that they would actually do it. So, if people knew something was going to happen before it actually happened, why didn't they say something? Why didn't they speak up? Why didn't they be that person that could have made the difference to get someone the help that they needed before they did something to hurt themselves or others? So that's what we're going to be talking about today, among other things. But if you're one of those people that has reasons why you wouldn't speak up or say anything, I completely understand. Because when I was in your age and in your grade, I had a bunch of reasons why I wouldn't speak up. We'll talk about some of those before we leave here. But I want you to realize that this is your community, and communities are kind of like puzzles. And if you've ever put a puzzle together, it really doesn't matter how many pieces that that puzzle has, whether it has 10 pieces, if it has 1,000 pieces, even if that puzzle had as many as 10,000 pieces in it, if there was one piece missing, if there was one piece that was disconnected, it changes the complete picture of the puzzle, it changes the whole thing. So we want to make sure that the puzzle picture here at this school, in this community, is as complete and as safe and as connected as possible. So we're going to be talking about a lot of different things over the next 30 minutes or so. And if you don't remember everything, that's okay. I at least want to make sure you remember my three things here. Simple, easy, but effective things. And remember, it really only makes a choice, it really only makes a difference if you all make the courageous choice to use these skills if you ever come into contact with a situation where you need to keep yourself safe. So see someone alone that may be exhibiting some of these warning signs, signals, and threats. Number two, if you happen to find them, act immediately, take it seriously. Don't be one of those people where we walk into the school afterwards that do something but didn't say anything or do anything. Be that person who's a leader, and guess what leaders do? They lead. They don't walk, they don't wait on somebody else to speak up, so you be that person that acts immediately and takes it seriously. And one of the ways that you can do that is by making the courageous and the bold choice to speak up and say something to a trusted adult. Just because all of these things are simple to do, it doesn't mean that they're easy to do, and this may be one of the hardest things. 
for you to actually speak up and have a conversation with a trusted adult or with somebody that can keep that person safe. But it can be one of the things that makes all of the difference. Now these are my three simple, easy things that I brought here to make sure that you all know how to keep yourself safe. But I want to make sure that you understand before we go any further that our schools are already safe. But just because we're safe from something, it doesn't mean that we're immune. It doesn't mean that there's a 0% chance of something happening. Just because something happened to someone else in another place, it doesn't mean that it can't happen here, it can't happen to us. Kind of the same way we're safe from a cold, but we're not immune from catching a cold. Especially right now after summertime and the fall and the winter when most people get sick. And if you felt like you were about to catch a cold, like a scratchy throat or a runny nose, you wouldn't wait until it got so bad before you did something about it. You wouldn't wait until you ended up in the hospital with the flu or with pneumonia to do something about it. I mean, you would do something about it as quickly as possible to make sure you don't get any sicker than you have to or stay sicker any longer than you have to. Well, that's exactly what we mean when we say we can do something about these warning signs or signals before it gets to the point, before it's so bad, where now that person is hurting themselves or hurting other people. And that's exactly how we can be proactive instead of reactive to give people the help that they need before they do something to hurt themselves or hurt other people. It's very important that you all understand that because we know we can do better, we take the statistics, and we know that there are people out there that may feel like school is an unsafe place, they may feel like they're dealing with sadness or depression, which is being sad two or more weeks in the last 12 months, and those are things that don't just stop them. It's kind of like a seed. And seeds have the potential to grow into things, but these have the potential to grow into things like maybe now because I'm dealing with this, now I'm thinking about hurting myself or hurting other people. And there's something that we can do about all of those things because we know not only through our research that we can do better, but we also know that most of the time before people do something like bring a weapon to school to hurt other people or use that weapon on themselves to hurt themselves, they will let someone know what they're thinking about doing or feeling like doing or planning on doing before they actually do it. And it's very important that you all understand. One more, go back one more for me. It's very important that you all understand the difference between a thought, a feeling, and an action. Because no one has to tell you what they're planning on doing or what they're thinking about doing before they do. The same way I didn't tell anyone that I was about to walk out here and start speaking before I did. I just walked out here and started speaking. I knew I was going to do it. I planned it in my head, make sure I didn't trip up any steps or anything like that. I knew what I was going to do, but I didn't tell you all. So I want you all to realize that when you see someone post something on social media, or you hear someone say something on Friday before the weekend about what they're planning on doing or what they're thinking on doing, that sometimes that's the way that they let us know that they need help. Without actually saying the three words, I need help. Without actually saying the four words, will you help me? And that's exactly the warning sign of the that we can do something about before it gets to the point where they're thinking about hurting themselves or others. The same way we would do something about that cough or that cold before we got before it got to the point where it was so bad that now we maybe have the flu or the pneumonia or something like that. So this is very important that you all understand not only the difference between your thought, feeling, and action, but also that you all spend time, two more slides for me. One more. In the places where people give these warning signs and signals. 37% of people give warning signs and signals through electronic messages like text messages and emails. 28% of them use social media. I just want to appease myself in here. I already know the answer. But raise your hand in here if you have a social media account. Doesn't matter what kind. Raise your hand. Hands down. So experience has taught me that as many people that just raised their hand, that there's still some people in here that have social media that did raise their hand. And about at least 65% of the room in here raised their hand. So that means that that's more than two times the amount of people spending time in places like social media where people give these, these cries for help. So if you know what to look for and where it can be found and how to act when you find it, this is how we can keep people safe. Because whether you're thinking about hurting other people or even if you're thinking about hurting yourself, most of the time people will give warning signs and let people know what they're about to do before they do it. So here's everything that I'm telling you in a nutshell. If you all can do the three things that you see to your left, we'll be able to help people get the help that they need, keep safe, and reduce the numbers of people that are getting hurt or injured like you see to your right. 
So with that being said, I want to make sure you understand exactly what warning signs, signals, and threats are. So I brought some definitions and some examples. And we'll start with a warning sign. That's going to be a thought, feeling, or behavior that indicates a significant change that someone may be in need of help. So remember, they may not walk up to you and say the three words, I need help. They may not walk up to you and say, hey, I'm dealing with this problem, I'm dealing with this issue, I don't know what to do, I don't know who to talk to, will you help me? They may not say that, they probably won't. But they will let you know something's going on because remember, they're acting a certain way, they're talking a certain way, they're behaving a certain way, and even if you don't know why they're acting or talking or behaving like this, you know something's going on because you've got that gut feeling that, I don't know what it is, Coach T, but something is going on with this person. I don't know what it is, but something's going on because they're acting different, they're talking different, and maybe some of the things that they may be doing that are warning signs are things like these. Maybe they're excessively angry. Go, go back one more. Go back one more. So maybe they're excessively angry when they used to be a happy person. Maybe now the same person who used to care about how they look, now they're having dramatic physical changes. Maybe the person they didn't used to have a problem being around people, making friends, maybe they were Mr. or Mrs. Popularity. Now that same person is withdrawing from other people. Or now they're nervous or anxious being around people. Remember, they may not walk up to you and say, I need help. I'm dealing with an issue. They may not walk up to you and say, something's going on. I need help. And you may not even know what's going on, but you know something's going on because they may be acting and give you some of these examples here that are warning signs. So next, let's talk about a warning signal. That's something similar to a warning sign. That's a gesture or action that lets something, somebody know that something's going on. And it can be obvious. Like my voice in this room, it's obvious to everyone here that I'm speaking right now, everyone can hear me. Or it can be something that's the exact opposite. And maybe it's not as obvious. Maybe it's something that's vague. Maybe it's something that's so unclear, so small, that no one else notices it except you. And because you're that only person that notices it, you can be the one that speaks up and says something. A few examples, maybe they're giving away their possessions, maybe they're bragging about having access to weapons, or they're joking and laughing, or planning something that happened, like I explained to you that happened at Sandy Hook Elementary, or what happened a couple years ago down south in the park here in Florida. So I want you to realize these are not things that we want to just brush off. If you hear someone saying something like this, we want to stop, make sure that they understand what they're saying, and if they're serious, to act immediately, take it seriously, and get them in contact with the trusted adult. And that's how we'll keep them safe and everyone else safe in the process. So that's a warning signal. We talked about a warning sign. Last but not least, is going to be a threat. Any communication, whether it be directly from me to you or through a third party. So I can walk up and say something to you in your face, or I can do it through a third party. Maybe I put it on social media, then you find out that way or something like that. And we don't want to just brush these things off if we hear people saying things like this. We don't want to just take it as a joke, and we also don't want to joke about things like this as well, because we're living in a very, very sensitive time. We can't afford to just brush things off and take it as a joke and just hope someone's joking and hope that they're not being serious. We can't afford that. We want to make sure we're doing everything in our power to keep you safe. So I would, I would ask you not to joke about these things, because if you hear someone saying something like this, for example, life isn't worth living, and we really don't know who they're talking about. So we can't afford to take it as a joke. Because maybe the life that they're talking about is their life. Maybe they feel like their life isn't worth living. Maybe, maybe if they're having a conversation with me, maybe they, they're talking about my life. And they feel like my life isn't worth living. Maybe they're talking about someone else's life that's causing them to feel a certain way that that person's life isn't worth living. So we can't afford to take it as a joke. We can't afford to just hope this person isn't being serious. If you hear someone saying something like this, we want to stop, make sure that they're okay, and if they're serious, to act immediately, take it seriously, and say something to a trusted adult. If you still want to joke about these things, remember I told you that in life, actions and choices, whether good or bad or big or small, they have consequences. So if you do decide to joke about something like this, don't be surprised if someone doesn't take it as a joke, they take it serious, and now you're dealing with the consequences of your actions. Don't be mad at them, be mad at you, because you're a young adult, and you made your own choice, and you have to deal with whatever comes with that. So with that being said, we talked about what to look for. Now let's talk about where it can be found. And this is really important as well because we've done it, we know throughout our research that you all spend a lot of time in places where these warning signs and signals can be found.
found. For example, social media is a big place. We all just raise our hand for having access and having some sort of social media account. Followed by homes, lunchrooms, and classrooms. And all of these places are places that have people, which means that just because you feel alone on the inside, it doesn't always mean that you're physically alone on the outside. Which means it may not always be easy for you to see with your eyes how everyone in here can see that I am the only person, I'm physically the only person standing up here. That doesn't mean someone can't feel alone and be surrounded by you all and be out there in the audience with you all. And sometimes when people feel alone and they're surrounded by people, they express themselves through social media. These are just a couple of past and present forms of social media. And just to let you know everything that we're talking about is real, what we did is we went online and we found some real posts from real students. These are all real. So I want you all to realize, especially since I'm speaking to older students, that the same way you all have a thumbprint in real life, you all have an online fingerprint. And a lot of times nowadays when you all are applying to colleges and jobs and things like that over the next couple of years, they're not only looking at who you are in real life, your resumes and your test scores and things like that, they're also looking at who you are online. And I want you to realize that sometimes when we put things online, we don't forget about it, but after you press enter, it belongs to the internet. And anybody can find it or do anything. So be mindful, it has nothing to do with this presentation. Just be mindful of the things that you put online because sometimes it can come back to help or hurt us later on in life. Now all of these things are real. One more, go back one more for me, one more for me. All of these things are real. Real weapons, what they were going to do with them. They were even, someone was even bold enough to put up a picture of the school and say that it was not made to be shot up first. So hopefully if you were to see something like this online, you would know now, if you didn't know before, that this isn't a cry for attention. This is a cry for help. Because remember, if they were really going to shoot up the school, if they were really going to bring weapons, or if they were really going to hurt people, they didn't have to let people know. They didn't have to give them a warning. If they really wanted to do it, they could have just come and did it. So hopefully, they're hoping that someone is looking for, and that someone knows that this is a warning sign or signal, because they're that person that made you look for. Now I want you to realize that this whole presentation, this whole program, is not just about you all worrying about bringing a weapon or someone bringing a weapon to school to shoot the school up. It's really about me getting you all to understand that sometimes when people are dealing with problems or dealing with issues, number one, maybe they don't know that they need help. Number two, maybe they don't know how to get help or who to talk to for help. Or number three, maybe they feel like people don't even care enough to help them. So they're not walking up and saying, I need help with their mouth and they're not seeking help by saying, I need help with their words. And a lot of times, most of the time, I told you, they're dealing with these problems for at least six months, thinking something, feeling something, planning something, and after six months or more of not getting any help, now they're going to do something to remove themselves because they feel like that's the only way that they can help, to remove themselves so they hurt themselves, or to remove other people that are causing them to feel a certain way. And sometimes these may be some of the problems or issues that they're dealing with that you saw on the screen. So if you see some of those things, we don't want to just brush it off. We want to act immediately and take it seriously. And this is how we can make a difference. Now as much of a no-brainer as that is, if I told you all that number two is act immediately and take it seriously, and then I asked you all a question like this, when should you act? What do you think the answer is? Immediately, right? It's like a no-brainer, right? However, as much of a no-brainer as that is, we're real people, right? So in the real world, with real people, when things really happen to them, they say they know they need to act immediately, but what they really do is they delay acting. Then after somebody that they know gets hurt or injured, they say things to me like this. Well, you know what, Coach D, I saw the warning signs, I saw the signals, I knew I needed to act immediately and take it seriously. But for whatever reason, you know, I just thought someone else would say something, so I didn't say anything. Or you know what, I saw what they put on social media, but everybody knows those T that they were just looking for attention, and I wasn't going to give them that attention. So I didn't say anything. These are all real things that real people tell us. But I want you all to realize that you can be that person that is not a bystander, who waits on other people to make changes and to make choices. You all can be an upstander. And that's someone who makes the courageous and bold choice to lead. Because leaders lead. And you can be that person that makes a difference. However, no matter where I'm at in the U.S., this is the number one thing that I need. Coach C, I'm not going to speak up. I'm not going to say anything because I don't want people to call me traitor. I don't want people to say I ratted and call me a rat. Coach C, I'm not going to speak up. I'm not going to say anything because people 
people say that I am a, what's that word that they say? Snitch. There we go. And let me ask you, juniors, what do they say happens to snitches? What do they say? Snitches get stitches, right? That's what they say. However, I want to make sure you all understand the main difference between snitching something and saying something. And then make sure you all make, make the difference and know the difference. Very quickly, I'm going to tell you a real story that happened to me in real life. So many, many years ago, before I became a law-abiding adult, I was just a sixth grader. And in the sixth grade, I had a gigantic sweet tooth. I loved me some candy, like many of you all did in the sixth grade as well. And in the sixth grade, I found out that there was a candy that came out that was kind of like a combination of two of my favorite candies. And this candy was called Reese's Pieces, and I wanted to try me some. But I had a little bit of a dilemma, right? I was in the sixth grade, I didn't have a job, didn't have any money, and Reese's Pieces cost a blame. So I had a little bit of a problem, but me and my best friend at the time, me and Kenny, we called him K3 because he's a third. Me and K3, we thought of a plan. And our plan was we were gonna go to the corner store a few neighborhoods over, and we were gonna get us a bag of Reese's Pieces. We were gonna get us a bag of Reese's Pieces by way of something that we had actually found out about, just like that hand that you see right there on the screen. It was called a five-finger discount. Who knows what that is? Stealing, shoplifting, point blank period. This was our plan. Kenny was going to distract the store clerk. And I was going to go into the aisle. And with these five fingers that you all see before your face today, grab me a bag of Reese's Pieces at a deep discount of zero dollars and zero cents and run out the door with it. Or as somebody told me last time, free 99. I didn't know it was a thing that people say, but it was free 99. Make a long story short, our plan didn't work like we planned on it, probably because we weren't career criminals. For some reason, my best friend, he got a little bit spooked. He got scared. He ran out the door. And because I was in the aisle trying to grab me some Reese's Pieces at the time, I saw him get spooked as well and tried to run out the door, so I tried to run out the door behind him. However, the store clerk saw him run out the door and he locked the door, which means my best friend got away, but I did not. Caught me red-handed with a bag of Reese's Pieces. And he turns to me and he tells me this. He says, listen, if you will tell me who was in here with you, I'll do one of the two things. Number one, I'll let you go, go get him. I'll bring him back here. Because both of you all tried to steal from me, both of you all will have to deal with the consequences. Or number two, you tell me who he was, I'll let you go. I'll bring him back here, and because he tried to get away, he'll just deal with the consequences for both of you. You won't have to deal with them at all. So those are the two choices he gave me, and that's the story I want to tell you. And with that being said, I want to ask you, if I were to tell the store clerk some information on my best friend, would I be snitching something or saying something? Okay. So who says, let's take it to a vote. Let's take it to a vote. Who says that I would be speaking up and I'd be being courageous and bold enough to say something. Who says I'd be saying something? Let me see your hands. All right, hands down. All right, who says, Coach G, if you let him know some information on your friend, that's supposed to be your best friend, you are a sixth grade snitch. Who says I'd be snitching something? Man, no faith, Junior's no faith in me. Hands down. All right, so if you're wondering what I did, Here's what I did. I'm going to tell you what I did. Remember, I can't speak over you, though. All right, if you're wondering what I did, I'm going to tell you in 10 minutes when I'm done with the presentation. I'm going to tell you in 10 minutes. Here. However, if you just said that I'd be snitching, you're exactly correct. You are exactly correct. I would be if, I'd be, if I were told I'd be snitching. Because this is the main difference between snitching something and saying something, Juniors. Most of the time when you're snitching, it's just like in my story. You were probably doing something that you probably weren't supposed to be doing in the first place, but you didn't think you would get caught. However, you got caught, and now you don't want to deal with the consequences of your actions, so you're going to do something to try not to deal with them, like tell on somebody else to get you out of trouble. That is selfish behavior, because it only helps you. When you're speaking up or when you're saying something, it's not about you being selfish and helping yourself. It's about you being selfless and speaking up to help someone else. So if you're worried about being labeled a snitch or a rat or anything like that, I want you to ask your, yourself one question. If you see any warning signs or signals, and that is, if I speak up, 
Am I being selfish in helping myself? Or am I being selfless in helping someone else? And if this is about you helping someone else, I want you to make that courageous and that bold choice to be an upstanding. Because like we talked about in the video, there's no too young or too old. And the reason that we can do that and the way that we can do that is by making that courageous and bold choice to say something to a trusted adult. And a trusted adult is going to be that person that has the knowledge to do something with the information to help the person you're giving them information about. So these are a couple of examples of some trusted adults. Give me like six slides. All oh, keep going, keep going, keep going. All the way to the spider slide. One more, there we go. Even if your trusted adult doesn't have one of these titles, make sure that they have the knowledge and the skills to do something with that information. And I challenge you, find a trusted adult here at school and wherever you spend most of your time when you're not here. So if you ever need to go speak with them, before you go speak with them, make sure you have all of your evidence. For example, if you saw something on social media, take a screenshot of it and print it out, and then go take that evidence to them and have a conversation with them in as simple as three steps. Number one, let them know that you need to talk to them about someone and give them that person's name. Number two, let them know that that person has been threatening some warning signs or signals, they've been acting or talking a certain way, then give them the examples of whatever that you have, like that screenshot from social media, and then you've got to let them know number three. Because number three is the main difference between snitching something and saying something. You've got to let them know that you need their help to get someone else help. Because it's not about you being selfish and helping yourself, it's about you being selfless and helping someone else. And then let them know where they can get in contact with that person. And the reason that we want to do all of this is because, believe it or not, you all are the eyes and ears of the school, which means that sometimes you all may see things that we don't see. And sometimes you may hear things that we don't hear. Because it's more likely that you're up on social media at 2 o'clock a.m. in the morning or 3 o'clock than your teachers are. So you're going to see that post that someone put up and then they delete it 15 minutes later. And if you know what to do about it, when you find it, we can be able to help that person get the help that they need and reduce the numbers of people who may be thinking about hurting themselves or hurting other people. And I know that this works because I've actually had people walk up to me and say things like this to me at the presentation. They told me, you know what, Coach T, this happened at my sibling's school, this happened at my cousin's school, someone posted something online, someone, someone said something to somebody before they left school and went home, and someone knew that it wasn't just a cry for attention. It wasn't just inventing. It was actually a cry for help. And they were hoping someone said something about it. Because somebody did, they were actually able to keep them safe from getting hurt or hurting other people. So I know that this works, but it only works if you all make the courageous choice to use my three skills. So remember, if you don't remember everything, I want to at least make sure you remember these three things. And it's up to you all to make the choice to use these skills now that I've made my choice to give them to you. And with that being said, I appreciate your energy. I appreciate your attention. That is my time. Thank you so much.